Hey guys, this is Sam. Welcome back to another episode of the only way to become a better photographer is to buy a new camera. Don't tell your parents I said that. Mom, Sam said buy new camera. <laughs> My mom's all the way in China. She would not hear me. All right, everyone. We're going back to the scene of the crime where, <laughs> where Sam dropped her camera. Where was it? It was like right here. Right here. It's where I dropped. So back half a year ago, I started to shoot film again. Now I have the Canon 1V, Canon A1, two Minota X700. Both of them are broken, sadly, and the Lomo LCA. I probably should already sell that one. All of them are 35 millimeter film cameras. Like most of you guys who started to shoot film, you start with 35 millimeters and then but you know, at one point you keep hearing people say bigger is better, medium format, yada yada. And then you're like, hmm, never tried it. Wondering how much better it's gonna be. Yep, after a whole month of researching online, AKA watching all the film photography channel on YouTube, I set my mind on the Pentax 645. Trust me, it was very attempting to just go six, seven straight. In this video, for one, I'm gonna talk about why I chose this camera to be my first media format camera, and for two, how to use it, how to load the film and unload the film. If you already own this camera and if you already know how to work a media format camera, you can skip this whole mumbo jumbo and jump straight to the test shoot to see some sample photos. That will be the part three, and I will also be talking about my first impression with this camera. It's almost perfect. I think I ate like one word. When it comes to buy your first media format camera, there are so many options, just like all the dating apps you have installed in your phone. You have the single lens reflex, double lens reflex, and range finders. And then you have the 645, 66, 67, 69, and so many different brands and models to choose from, unlike the matches you have in your dating app. I don't really know how dating app works. <laughs> I chose the single lens reflex camera simply because that's what I've been using for the longest time. My 5D Mark IV is a DLSR, that's digital single lens reflex. And then as format goes, you have 645, 66, 67, 69. The number is indicate the frame size. So they all take 120 film, the smaller the frame is, more shots you will get out of a roll. This being the first reason I go with the 645, it just seems logic to just make tiny little step from 35 millimeter. After deciding on the 645 format, I looked a lot of the options. I specifically compared the Mamiya 645, the Contax 645, and the Pentax 645. I'm buying this camera not to just use it for personal projects. I'm also expecting to use this for work. That's taking studio portrait, family portrait, kids, use it for wedding photography. Therefore, I need a reliable auto or semi-auto, fast and easy to use overall newer design camera. I don't know if that justify it, but that's my, my reason. <laughs> overall, I think the Pentax 645 fits my need and budget. Besides, I may eventually get the Pentax 67. So getting the Pentax 645, it just seems like it will make a perfect learning process. And then as Pentax 645 goes, you have three models. You have the Pentax 645, 645N, and the 645N2, which is the one I have. The biggest differences is the 645 doesn't have autofocus, which the other two have. And between the N and the N2, there are small differences. I'll put a chart here. You can pause the video to see the specific. All right, this is gonna be the most anticlimactic box opening ever, as usual. Ah! When I first opened the box, it does look intimidating. Wow! 
Oh my god. Pentax 6452. <laughs> oh my god. This looks brand new. The body is solid, but not heavier than my Canon 1V with the battery grip on. The body itself, it's like a square block. No camera I've used before that has a similar body style. I have a very small hand. I can hold it with one hand, but not securely. That's not how I dropped my camera. <laughs> There's only a tiny bit of scuff at the bottom, but besides that, this is pretty much brand new. Here you go. This is my first ever media format. Overall, it has a pretty modern design. If you have ever used a DSLR camera, the control button should be very self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. Self, self-explanatory. Is that how you say it? The camera takes six AA batteries. The battery compartment is located under the hand grip. Just twist the handle to pull the battery holder out. Same way to put it back in. And then it comes to the real intimidating part, which is loading the film. If you never load a media format film before, this could look complicated, but you only need to remember one thing. It's the black side of the film facing out, which is facing yourself. My friend Alex also has the same exact camera, so I had him to load the film for me for the first time to show me how it's done. First of all, to open the film back, you flip the handle up, turn it to the red dot, then just turn it a little more past the red dot. You will hear a click. Then you can pull the film holder out. There are two sides. One side, it has an S written on it. Remember this as start. You want to put your film roll on the start side. You remove the seal on the film, lift the handle up, flip the handle back down to secure the film in place. Then you pull the end of the film out, wrap it around the back. Remember black side facing out because when you put it back in, this is the side. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't have the camera in my hand. Because <laughs> when you put it back in, just imagine it. When you put it, when you put it back in, that's the side. It's facing the lens and it's getting exposure from the camera. I should have the camera in my hand to explain this. And then you stick the paper into the empty spool, just like how you load some of the 35 millimeters. The take-up spool only goes one way, so you won't get it wrong. And then slowly turn the spool to make sure your film is catching properly. Then look the other side, you will see a line with an arrow start rolling up. Depending on what kind of film you're using, this might look a little different. But line up the arrow with the starting line on the holder. Just put the film holder back into the camera, push it in, lock it, you're ready to go. And then you can slide this on button to turn the camera on. When the switch is sitting on the middle, you see there's a little sound symbol. The camera will make sound when your subject is in focus or your mirror lockup is set or when you only have one frame left. I don't know why they do that. Maybe it's to tell your assistant it's time to reload another film back. That's if you have assistant and if you have another film back. After the camera is on, you need to set your ISO. Unlike my Canon 1V, this camera will not automatically read your film speed. So first, you need to press down on the center button on the exposure compensation dial and turn it to ISO. Then on the other side of the screen, there is a up and down triangle. You can set your ISO to your need. After the ISO is set, turn the dial back to zero or back to whatever compensation you need. To start shooting, press on the shutter button. The camera will automatically load the film to the first frame. You will see the number one appears on the LED screen. If instead of the number one, you see a letter E, that means 
you did not load the film properly, you have to open the back and then reload the film again. All right, then you are ready to shoot. I had my dear friend Ivy and another photographer friend Alex who has the same camera to help me shoot the very first roll on this camera together. Alex also helped filming the behind the scene of this video. Thank you guys. <laughs> One, two, three. Can you hold it up a little bit more? Like right here? I think I'm a little bit steady this time. Turn your head that way. Yeah, 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 like that, like that. 但是我太矮了. Yeah. <laughs> put your hand out a little bit. Yeah, put yeah, 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 right there, right there. Nice. As the first roll, I think the picture came out nicely. I love how soft and smooth the camera is rendering light and shadow. I was shooting on Kodak Portrait 400 at box speed with a 75mm lens. Can you guys hear the playing? I shot all of these photos at f2.8, which is wide open for this lens. So a f.8 will give a different depth of field than a 2.8 on a full frame camera. It will be shallower and the 75mm lens at 2.8 on a 645 camera kind of have the similar look with the 50mm at 1.2 or 1.4 on a full frame camera. There are a whole a lot of information you can find about equivalency between different format and different camera lens depths of field. Go, go research it yourself. Is equivalency even a word? Equivalency. I don't know. So shooting with Pentax 645 N2 for the first time is much smoother than I expected. The camera feels like a slightly bulkier DSLR. Every time you press down on the shutter, it automatically winds to the next frame. The viewfinder is super bright and super sharp. I feel like I could just use this camera without my glasses. The autofocus have some difficulty grabbing the focus sometime, but I think that might be my focus mode Let's setting. Try the autofocus on this one. And the one thing that makes me feel like I'm shooting on film and shooting on medium format is the shutter sound. I feel like I'm shaking. It is loud and you can feel it when the mirror going up and down it shakes for many shots i feel like my hand is shaking with the camera when pushing down onto the shutter oh, again i just can't help like the camera i always feel like the camera is shaking but at 125th of the second we should be fine time to start using a tripod <laughs> With the 120 film, the camera shoots 15 frames per roll. Versus the 35, you get 36 per roll. You have much less shots. So that makes me more careful with each shot since it's more expensive. <laughs> Not just shooting on film, but shooting on media format film. Oh my god. I don't think I'll ever go large format. All of these photos are shot with natural light with the internal light meter. I think overall the built-in light meter is pretty accurate judging by the result. I'll try to use a light meter in the future and see if I'll we'll get different results. But at this point, I think it's safe to say this camera will work just fine without a external light meter. That's such a sound. All right, now we're gonna open the back. Turn, turn a little more. Oh, ah, this is so scary. And it's done, our first row. 
All right, we're gonna take this out, lift this, and ta -da! done. To be very honest with you, after I got the negative back and scanned it, I wasn't that amazed. I don't think what I expected out of this camera, but it's not quite what I expected. Does that make sense? <laughs> I guess for one, shooting on media format will not instantly make your photo look that much better. I think I said that when I first bought the Canon 1V, shooting on film would not instantly make your photo look that much better. And then you have film people be like, no, shooting film is better. I think no matter what camera or gear you're shooting on, it always, always comes down to everything about photography itself. The light, the color, the density of light and color, the ratio of light and color, how your camera and the lens affect the look of your photo and how the film you choose react to light and color. And then you have direction, concept, and all of that stuff. There are so many moving parts to an image. It's up to you, the photographer, to decide what to dial in to achieve the image in your mind. But that being said, I do really like how the skin tone looks on these pictures. That might not have so much to do with the camera, but the film I was using. I also took some shots on my digital camera at the same time. The digital photo are not edited. I'm not trying to compare them and make a point here to say which one is better, just to show you the differences. After the test shoot I did with Ivy, I used this camera a couple of more times. I shot some family photos, did a couple portrait sessions, shot some flat lays and stills. I started to like this camera more and more. Sometimes when I'm out shooting with other cameras, back of my mind, always thinking, hmm, wondering how the shot gonna look like with my Pentax. You know, just like when you're out eating something good and you're wondering if your girlfriend or boyfriend would also like it. <laughs> And last Sunday, I also took this camera to another film photographer gathering. Shout out the 35M Pro Film Lab organized this photo walk. By the time I'm writing the script, I haven't sent the film to the lab yet. So probably have to show you the pictures some other time. Don't worry, this time I remember to put film in my camera. <laughs> I know what I'm doing! <laughs> and... Remember to drop it! <laughs> she dropped her camera! <laughs> it's clipping over here, you see that, right? That's why it's blinking to let you know you're too hot. I'm you... almost done. Ten? <laughs> Still a little hot, but baby dropped the camera. And to make myself look professional, I totally didn't drop my brand new media format camera on the floor because it's a new strap and the strap came loose. Anyway, the camera is fine. Luckily, it was dropped on grass. It got some scratch, but but you know what? Now the camera has transformed from a brand new Ferrari to a dinky, robust pickup truck. <laughs> and ready to work. That's at least how I tell myself so I don't cry myself to death. <sighs> All right, I hope you liked this week's video. If you hit the like button, more people will know I dropped the camera, so don't do it. But Subscribe to the channel to undrop the camera in my heart. Anyway, this is Sam. I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Ciao. And let me introduce you, my new friend Hachi. Say hi, Hachi. Hi.